Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to assign different types of diaphragms in RAM frame. In this video, we are going to be showing you how to assign a pseudo flexible diaphragm. In this video, we're going to be focusing on how to analyze a model with pseudo flexible diaphragms assigned to it. In a pseudo flexible diaphragm analysis, the stiffness of the vertical lateral load resisting system is significantly greater than the stiffness of the diaphragm. If we were to take a look at the lateral load distribution, we would see that RAM frame would distribute the lateral load to the supporting frame members based on the percentages defined in the pseudo flexible diaphragm properties. We would also notice that all the vertical members connected to the diaphragm will deflect independently of each other. Let's now turn our attention back to our sample model. And we're going to be using the same model that we used in the previous video when we analyzed a rigid diaphragm. To start the process for assigning a pseudo flexible diaphragm, we're going to proceed to RAM frame, which we can do by clicking on the frame design icon within the design toolbar in the RAM manager. Now, the first step is to go ahead and assign our diaphragms at each level as a pseudo flexible diaphragm. To do that, we're going to go to our criteria menu and select the diaphragm option. Within this dialog, we'll select the All Pseudo Flexible option, and then we'll finish this up by clicking OK. Now, a dialog will appear on your screen to let you know how the loads are going to be distributed to the vertical lateral force resisting system. And basically, the way loads are distributed are based on percentages that we're going to assign to each frame based on their assigned frame number. So we'll go ahead and click OK, as this is just a reminder to let us know to set those percentages. In addition to that, let me go ahead and turn off my diaphragm for a moment, and let's take a look at the frame numbers that we've assigned. Now, to use this approach, it will be necessary to assign frame numbers. Frame numbers can either be assigned in the RAM modeler or through RAM frame. Now for this model, we've already assigned our frame numbers and we can view them on screen by clicking on the show frame numbers icon. And we can see that our shear wall is frame number one, our moment frame is frame number two, and our two brace frames are frame number three and frame number four. If you need to assign frame numbers in RAM frame, you can come down to this toolbar here and say assign frame numbers and you can go ahead and assign them to the various members of your lateral system. So for our model we've already assigned our frame numbers and we're going to review our frame number or our percentages that will be used in a pseudo flexible diaphragm. To review that we're going to go to our loads menu bar option and select pseudo flexible diaphragm properties. And here we can see how loads will be applied at each level and to each frame. So if I had load in my Y direction, so that would be in this direction, I'm going to be distributing load to my shear wall and my moment frame. And each frame, each side, is going to be able to take 50% of the load. If I were distributing or applying load in the global X direction, then I'm going to assume that 50% of the load will be going to my brace frame, on one side and then 50% on the other side. Now I typically assign these percentage percentages based on the tributary area for how the flexible diaphragm is going to be assigning the load to the frames. Now this is done at each level. So here I have my wind loads and there's my roof and my typical level. And I could do this for my seismic if I had notional or user loads and also dynamic loads. Now, in addition to that, at the bottom of this dialog, I can decide to distribute the applied loads to the frame members equally or based on their relative stiffness. So once we're satisfied with our percentages here, we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, once we've set up those two things, we need our diaphragm to be assigned. We need to review our pseudo flexible diaphragm properties and we need frame numbers. Once all those three things are done, we're ready to perform our analysis and review our results. So we're going to go to the Process menu bar option and select Analyze.
Now, through a pseudo-flexible diaphragm approach, ram frame is going to distribute the lateral loads to the supporting frame members based on their percentages defined in the pseudo-flexible diaphragm properties, and all the vertical members connected to the diaphragm will be able to deflect independently of each other. So let's go ahead and review some of those results and confirm those properties have been incorporated into our analysis. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our loads and applied forces report. So I'm going to come up to my reports menu and select loads and applied forces. Now, what we're going to see here is that this report will list the story and diaphragm forces for each load case and the defining criteria. Now, one of the major advantages for assigning something as a pseudo-flexible diaphragm instead of just a flexible diaphragm is that in a pseudo-flexible diaphragm, RAM frame will be able to calculate your story forces for you. In a flexible diaphragm, if we were to use that option, the program would rely on us to calculate the magnitudes of our story forces instead of calculating it for us. Now, as we take a look at this loads and applied forces report, and I'm going to remind you that this is the same exact model we used in the previous video when we showed a rigid diaphragm approach, is what we're going to notice is that the diaphragm type will affect how the loads are distributed through the structure, and it may also affect the calculation of the code loads themselves. Now, for this sample structure, the natural frequency of the structure is less than one hertz in both directions, when a pseudo-flexible diaphragm is assigned, which basically classifies the entire structure as flexible according to the ASCE 7 section 6.2. Now, since the structure is now flexible, the main wind force resisting system loads are calculated in accordance with the appropriate code sections for a flexible structure. So here through this report, we can see that the structure is flexible and the loads have been applied accordingly. The next thing we're going to take a look at is our frame story shears. So the loads are basically applied directly to the frames based on their percentages. So to review that information, we can come down here, select our frame story shears, and we can display any of the diaphragm forces for each load case in our particular model. So here I'm going to say, let's take a look at wind in our X direction. This will be applied to our base braced frames. I'm going to click display and then click apply. And here you can see that the same exact load was applied for one base brace frame and the other. If I were to take a look at load in the opposite direction, I can see that load has been evenly distributed between the moment frame and the shear wall, even though the shear wall is significantly stiffer. In addition to that, if I were to take a look at the diaphragm deflections, I could take a look at my reports, followed by my nodal displacements. And I would see that all of the nodes at each level that are connected to the diaphragm are able to deflect or move and rotate independently of each other. This concludes our process for assigning a pseudo-flexible diaphragm in RAM frame. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.